on TMZ. So uh, Taylor Swift had a really bad breakup with Calvin Harris. We know that. So check this out. His wife loves listening to Taylor Swift. As soon as my husband goes away, I listen to Taylor Swift. Just for a few minutes to get, you know, it out of her system. Husbands and wives do very different things when the other leaves for 10 minutes. <laughs> my God. So we got video of the chair that Morgan Wallen allegedly threw off the bar in Nashville. He didn't just like drop it, he flings it. Do we know why he was so upset? You don't do stupid things in a bar because you're angry. You do them because you're drunk. My guess is within the next three days, he's going to rehab. And we can show the judge that you were remorseful because he will go at least to jail and maybe to prison because he's got no defense here if he did this. Nobody has enjoyed Madonna's tour more than Ricky Martin, who was brought up on stage, and the dancers really put on a show for Ricky. I'm not sure we can show everything that the dancers were we doing. We can't show anything the dancers were doing. Well, then describe, paint me a picture, because I don't know. Here's your picture. What? I suggest go to TMZ.com yeah, for the rest of it. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth was hit at the airport and we got a full look of his new tattoo. He got this tattoo with Matt Damon. Is the tie turning on tattoos a little bit? In my gym, I'm the only person that doesn't have tattoos. I could see you getting like a late life tattoo. No. If you got a TMZ oh. tramp stamp. That would be <laughs> that just says boom, boom, boom on this spot. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin Harris's wife, Vic Hope, has a deep, dark secret. As soon as my husband goes away, I listen to Taylor Swift. She's a music cheater! And with Calvin's ex, no less. When Calvin Harris is not at home, that is the moment that she blasts Taylor Swift. But just a little fill, just, <laughs> just a couple of songs, yeah. get out of my system, then it's done. Good. Then she resumes back to normal, you know, probably his music. <laughs> that is so messed up. It is not messed no, up. No, it's messed No, it's messed up that she, that she actually, said it. You're betraying him just as much by saying that you do it. But honestly, what does Calvin Harris think? It's Taylor Swift. Basically, every girl is a little bit of a fan of her. That's not true. Not the cool, not cool girls. Cool girls don't like Taylor Swift. Hey, bud, you want to insult the Swifties? You're on your own. We don't need trouble with those crazies. Anyway, big deal. Vic likes Taylor. Calvin's breakup with Taylor couldn't have been that bad. It was really bad. There was rumors that Taylor cheated on Calvin Harris with Tom Hiddleston. And he accused her of it in a song. Touche. Yeah, what's good for the goose is good for the table, which has turned on the other foot. Anyway, Vic, you blast that Taylor Swift music. Have fun, go nuts, as long as Calvin isn't there. Man, hu husbands and wives do very different things when the other leaves for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks, Vic. Your secret is safe with us, as well as a massive radio and television audience. It's another day and another Bianca Sensori outfit, and today she's wearing a dress that looks like a condom. Best yet. I think maybe best yet. She keeps <laughs> one up in herself. You keep saying that. She keeps she, going. She just keeps going. <laughs> Where does she get these outfits? I don't know. I think they're made. They're custom for sure. Devin hasn't blinked in 30 seconds. <laughs> no, th this might be a little too far. Any other person can't do this. They get arrested. But do she's they, not naked. Harvey. Have you ever been to BOA at 10 o'clock at night in West Hollywood? The stuff people wear going Nothing in there? Nothing like this. Ne I've never seen anybody wear I've this. Seen, I, I've been out plenty of times. I've never seen anybody dressed like this, ever. I've never seen a woman You've never been to a strip club? Sure. Well, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've not been to clubs or play or restaurants in, in like West Hollywood or Hollywood? I've never seen a woman dressed like that at a restaurant. Uh, Devin, have you ever seen a woman at a see-through top at a, at a bar or a restaurant? I have seen one. And you married her immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and now TMZ presents America's favorite game show, Baggy Pants or Boner. Today's contestant, Ricky Martin. Madonna's celebration tour is in Miami. I think we found the biggest Madonna fan, Ricky Martin. So to speak. So to speak. <laughs> They're referring to his penis. Because Ricky was brought up on stage to judge some of Madonna's dancers who put on quite a show for him. I'm not sure we can show everything that the dancers were we doing. We can't show anything the dancers were doing. Then paint me a picture, because I don't know. Here's your picture. What? I suggest go to TMZ.com yeah, for the rest of it. it.
And as the dance went on, people noticed that Ricky, how shall we say this, may have given them a solid 10, which was made even more evident when he stood up. Everyone thought he had a boner. I think it's just his pants. If he really did, he wouldn't have stood up. Stay in your seat and you take the zero. And try to think of unsexy things, like for Ricky, women. So we're glad you enjoyed the concert, Ricky, and we all learned a valuable lesson here. You gotta put that one in the waistband, man. We were gonna say Madonna's show seems to be a lot of fun, but that's a good takeaway as well. Now give us tens across the board, Ricky! Dr. Nassif, how are you, mate? Great, nice to see ya. Dr. Paul Nassif at LAX from the show Botch. One of the most famous plastic surgeons in the world, so a good person to ask about Gypsy Rose Blanchard, who just got rhinoplasty. I say, when she takes off the bandages and sees herself anew, can that have some sort of a transformational impact on your self-worth and- Most of the time they're happy with the transformation, even though the nose is very swollen after the first week. I say like, asking for a friend, what, why, like, a lot of women get their boobs and their butt done, like, why isn't, like, why don't guys get things like that done? How come there isn't, like, an easy way to make, you know, your size bigger and, like... Down there? Down there, like... Well, there is. There's a buddy of mine named Dr. Gary Ulcher in Beverly Hills. Make a little visit to him. Really? I'm sure he can get some work in for your friend. <laughs> or you, if that's no, the no, case. No, 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 not me. Well, I'm, I'm like, why isn't this a common thing? I think thing? because it's harder to do. Because it's not talked about. Can you actually do that, or is it, like, lengthening your... Legs. So what if you could do it, but the extension part's a totally different color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, <Harvey. laughs> Listen, you take care of your hey, I thought it was hysterical. <laughs> yeah, I it. loved it. All right, it's 87-year-old Billy D. Williams. We want to know what he loved. Blackface? Are Why you? not? Because you should do it. Oh dear. Legendary actor Billy D. Williams, Lando Calrissian from Star Wars. So he was on the Club Random podcast with Bill Maher. And they started talking about the 1965 movie Othello. Where Lawrence Olivier, a white man, put on blackface to play Othello, the Shakespearean play. And Billy D. Williams is a fan. He stuck his ass out because black people are supposed to have oh, big I, asses, right? I understand. I thought it was hysterical. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. But Othello isn't supposed to be funny. It's a tragedy. And also, seriously, blackface? Why not? Because you should do it. And if you're an actor, you should do anything you want to do. Even Madam Webb? What you gotta understand is, this happened a lot before it didn't. And people who were brought up in that time, the, it, it, it was just a different vibe. He's 87. I know, but he's, he's checking out. No, Billy D. Williams not afraid to say anything. But he's not afraid to say anything also because he's 87 years old. He, that may mean he's speaking his truth. He believes it. Unfortunately, Bill didn't ask him about non-actors dressing in blackface, like the Canadian Prime Minister. What about what Justin Trudeau did? Yeah, or Julianne Huff on Halloween. But also, isn't Halloween kind of a form of acting? No. 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 Time to delete old photos from your Instagram. Thanks, Billy D, and good luck with the backlash. Chris Hemsworth was with his family at the airport in Australia, and we got a full look of his new tattoo, which kind of abstracty, but in reality, it looks like pen leaked on his arm. Don't they have no tats? That's what I thought. Like, why are you ruining your body? I know, their bodies are temples. Why would they ever draw on Doesn't he have leg tattoos? Yeah, he has some tattoos. Is, is the tide turning on tattoos a little bit? No. 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 They're so popular. I am like, in my gym, I'm the only person that doesn't have tattoos. For your 75th, can we pick out a tattoo for you? I know. That'd be so cute. Harvey, come on. Just thug life across your belly. If you got a TMZ oh. tramp stamp. That was so <laughs> no, yeah. it's boom, boom, boom on this butt. I'm the cheeks they move, move, yeah. move, move, move. <laughs> <laughs> So we got video of the chair that Morgan Wallen allegedly threw off the bar in Nashville. And he didn't just like drop it, he flings it. But that definitely kills somebody. Oh. That, that, that's a hundred percent death. It would absolutely kill somebody. It was six stories high. Plus, Jelly Roll says he passed on the chance to meet Diddy. And at first he said, yes, I'm down. And was at first it like I was like, who don't want to meet the guy that got Tupac killed? And he kind of jokes, like, who doesn't want to meet the guy who killed Tupac? Oh, damn. Jokes we don't make out loud. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the building. 
Coming up. Robin Thick. I talked to him about his son. This kid's like an incredible singer. What sort of advice are you giving him? Enjoy his time with his friends and, and be young. Be right back. What really happened the night of Morgan Wallen's arrest for hurling a chair off a rooftop bar in Nashville? We now have video of the chair! And you can see it flying off the roof if you look closely. And squint. And also close your eyes and imagine it. So it's a little blurry, but we put in a little arrow here. You see it. Well, <laughs> it's a little tough to see, but... It's like every UFO special we do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is no UFO, because it's been identified, and it's... It's a 20-pound chair. It's 20 pounds? Yeah, but what's interesting is he didn't just, like, drop it. He flings it. Because there's a ledge. And it, it took effort. It was. It's a 20-pound chair. Blair, the chair here. Can we please stop talking about my weight? I was sitting pretty till that man put his big, strong hands on me. I kind of liked it, but I never agreed to go down there. And now Morgan Wallen's about to go down like a chair off a Nashville roof. Allegedly all because... He got wasted and did something really stupid. Facing three felonies. He will go at least to jail and maybe to prison because he's got no defense here if he did this. And what he's got to do is show contrition. And this happens in almost every case like this, where the lawyer tells him, you got to go to rehab then we can show the judge that you were remorseful wow. because it'll it'll play in sentencing. Maybe so. As for the chair. Did you see how good a shape it is? It went off a six-story building? No, it's bent. Oh. It's bent. Do you know what would happen to Charlie's chair if you threw it off a building? The thing would disintegrate. Right. It would break because you've been farting in it. Ew! If that made things break, I'd never have a chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As for what happens to Morgan Wallen, he'll just have to sit tight. Can I just ask about your son Julian, man? Robin Thick at LAX. I talked to him about his son, Julian Fuego Thick. This kid's like an incredible singer. Really? Like he's got pipe. Somebody to lean on, lean on, lean on me. Yeah. So I say, look, yeah, is he growing up? Does he hope to be just like you one day? He also loves uh, what his mom does, you know? He loves the stage too, he loves to act and he loves to sing. And what sort of advice are you giving him? Just to uh, enjoy his time with his friends and, and be young. And, and I like when, if, if your kid's like wants to be a star and they're 14, and I don't think you should help them become a star. Why? Why? Alan helped him. Charlie, if your kid wanted to get into business, would you help them? So we know that show business is a completely different industry. Charlie, if Peach wanted to go to LAX and sleep in her car, you wouldn't encourage her? <laughs> <laughs> I could help her achieve that. <laughs> Why am I laughing at this? <laughs> I'm paying you Because it's a joke. Really? Yes. Okay. I just got Robin Thicke. After John Legend woke him up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take awesome, care, man. God bless you. Hey, thank you, Robin. And now, move over, Long Island medium lady, because there's a new clairvoyant in town who said he had a bad feeling about Diddy. And it? I did Kimmel. Okay. Mm -hmm. The day Diddy did Kimmel. Jelly Roll, who said he had some puffy premonitions on the set of Jimmy Kimmel. Weeks before the lawsuit went down with Cassie, they were both on a late night show, and he says that backstage, they asked him if he wanted to meet Diddy. And at first he said, yes, I'm down. And I started walking that way. And as I was getting down the hallway, I said, nah. Better not. And went and got back in the car. And it's pretty clear why Jelly Roll had that bad feeling in his stomach. That was indigestion. Could be acid reflux is a bitch. Or he got the Diddy ick. Before Cassie filed the lawsuit, was Diddy radioactive? Kimmel wouldn't have had him on if he was radioactive. So if Kimmel's having him on the show, he's going to say, oh, I got a bad feeling about that? Really? I don't know what it was. Do you think you'd... And I made a joke was at first. Like I was like, feeling? who don't want to meet the guy that got Tupac killed? And nobody <laughs> thought that was funny. So I was like, maybe I shouldn't go do this anyway. <laughs> yeah, murder jokes aren't the best icebreakers when meeting someone new. Anyway, did Jelly Roll have a Diddy hunch or what? It feels weird to me. Why can't Jelly Roll have intuition? These rumors about Diddy have been percolating even before Cassie came out and said anything. But it didn't have an impact on people. I mean, he had these parties, these lavish parties where everybody in town went. Explain his 50th birthday party. Everybody was there. Not Jelly Roll. I think Jelly Roll might have been in prison during that. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. So, thanks, psychic Jelly Roll. Hey, can you tell us who's going to win the NBA Finals? Bye! A national treasure, Vanna White, everyone. 
Got our first look at Ryan Seacrest and Vanna White together on TV. As we know, uh, Ryan is said to be the new host of Wheel of Fortune. Um, she was just a special guest on American Idol. I'm so excited to get to work with you, and I thought maybe we could work together right now. We went back and forth a little bit, and she helped him introduce um, like a new contestant that was coming out. Would you like to help me with the next finalist introduction? Absolutely. Okay, go for it. Ready? Yeah. This is so smart of them because they you don't want to just like jolt people with it. It's a soft launch, as they say. I gotta tell you, Secrets is just unbelievable. So he'll have this job till he's 70. Yeah, Harvey, are you gonna like retire? Or are you just gonna run this thing till your wheels fall off? Yeah, I have an announcement. Oh my God. He's gay. <laughs> A national treasure, Vanna White, everyone. Coming up. Bill Murray was at the NCAA title game to support his son, Luke, who is an assistant with UConn. UConn is the greatest basketball program of the last 30 years. That's why college basketball can be more impressive to be good. College players leave after a year. In Courtney's case, seven years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a Yukon coronation. The Huskies make history. Ladies and gentlemen, we celebrate Yukon, your national champions, and their MVP, Mr. Bill Murray. Wait, that can't be right. Bill Murray was at the NCAA title game. He was there to support his son, Luke, who is actually an assistant with Yukon. Oh, really? He gets a lot of credit for uh, for being the uh, like the orchestrator of this great offense. Two championships in a row. But Bill, if they win again tomorrow, then we may have a problem. Anyway, look at Bill getting into a flex off with Drew Brees, congratulating his son after the win, holding up the trophy. Awesome! He's like a proud dad. He's really cool to see, actually. Dude, people like to talk about Nepo babies. Like, Bill Murray's son obviously had every privilege you could have had. Being a basketball coach is like one of the most grueling jobs. The cynical thought is that he didn't have to worry about anything else, so if he loved basketball, he could just solely concentrate on basketball. That's ridiculous. And who cares? Yeah. He's a great basketball coach. They're the favorites to win next But year. aren't they saying he's probably leaving? That's why college basketball could be more impressive to be good. College players leave after a year if they're very good. In Courtney's case, seven years. Oh. <laughs> Damn, boss, that was harsh. Of course, you have the opportunity for rebuttal. It was nine! Congratulations, UConn. Now go eat, drink, and be Murray. Coming up. Kamala Harris has one policy we could all get behind. No taking your shoes off on planes. Oh God, had it completely. Can we also say men should not wear shorts on an airplane? Okay, what? Oh, let's go. Kamala Harris has one policy we could all get behind. No taking your shoes off on planes. Oh God, had it completely. <laughs> It's terrible. Awful. And then if they take their shoes off and then cross their legs so that their foot is just dangling right in front of <laughs> the you. Aisle. It's just no, no, no. That is that is a war crime. You cannot do that. And that is disgusting. But if you if you have socks on, That's it's fine. This is clearly a statement about Robert Kennedy Jr. A hundred percent. Because he famously was not wearing shoes on a plane, and that's what this is about. And he walked in the bathroom. Walking into the bathroom of a plane barefoot is criminal. Jail. Can we also say men should not wear shorts on an airplane? Okay, what? Oh, oh, that's so. No, absolutely. You sit next to somebody and coach, your knees touch. If you touch a man. <laughs> Such homophobia. The gayest man in the world does not want to touch knees with another man's hairy knees. Uh, I'm sorry. You're out right over your skis, dude. Jason's like, women shouldn't wear underwear on planes either. <laughs> He's got rules for everything. Oh, God. Had it. Completely. <laughs>